Hey, what's up, Algebra 1? Mr. Catlin here to help you out with your homework. I didn't have Lesson 10 or 11 posted, and Lesson 10 is actually a typo on my part. That's the warm-up we did on Tuesday. So um, I'll still go over it just for those that might still need help. Just real quickly, though, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So this will be Lesson 10 and Lesson 11. But Lesson 10, real fast, it's a linear equation. You've got your y-intercept. You've got your slope. So the 8. That's what that is. The 8 is the y-intercept. The, uh, the negative 2 is the slope. If you go down 8 over 4, down 8 over 4, that's your slope. When you simplify that, it gets negative 2. So that's your slope. And then the last part kind of led into the lesson where we started to look at the x-intercept. Like, where does it cross? Well, it crosses at 4, uh, 4, 0. And how does this relate to the equation? Well, this is the zero of the equation. We know it's the zero of the equation because four is the x that we can plug in to get a y that equals zero. So it's the zero of the equation. If we put four in that spot right there, well, two times four is eight, and eight minus eight gives us the zero for y. So that's why it's the zero of the equation. That's what x-intercepts are on quadratics, too. We use that idea on lesson 11. As I told you, I was going to go through that one really fast. So on Lesson 11, we started to graph these uh, uh, using the two in factored form. So they'll give it to us in factored form, and without using Desmos Calculator, because you're not going to have your Chromebook for the test, you need to be able to graph these on a graph. All right, so let me show you how that's done. Um, first of all, it says, what are the x-intercepts of the graph representing f? We know that the x-intercepts, when it's in factored form, are when each of the factored versions equals zero, the zeros of this particular function. So x plus four and x minus two, when will they equal zero? Well, for this one, x would have to be two to make that work. And for this one, x would have to be negative four to plug in for x and make it equal zero. So these are also our x-intercepts and our zeros of our function. So we know that this is gonna cross at two zero and negative four zero. So those are our x-intercepts and negative 4, 0. What are the x and y coordinates of the vertex? That's a little bit tougher to find because we found out, let me go down here so I can draw it. We know that it's going to go, this is going to cross here at 2, 0, like we showed, and 1, 2, 3, negative 4. We know that it's going to be a parabola. Now the parabola might do something like this, right? Or maybe it does something like this. Or maybe it's not as steep. Maybe it's a little flatter like that. We don't know, but we do know that it's going to hit those two points. And we also know that it's symmetrical. So that means that the vertex is going to hit at these two dots midpoint. And 2 and negative 4 have a midpoint at negative 1. That's the 3 this way, 3 that way. We can find that by knowing there's 6 apart. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So come in 3, come in 3, you end up at negative 1. Right? So this is the point at which the vertex is going to land, whether it's way down here or way up here. We don't know yet, but we do know that the x-coordinate is going to be at negative 1. Now, to find the y-coordinate, all we have to do is plug our x-coordinate that we know the vertex is going to land at into our function for x, because that's what our function does. It spits out y's when you plug in numbers for the x. So we're going to replace x's with our known vertex value for x, which is negative 1. It should be halfway between the two x-intercepts. So uh, I've got negative 1 in x's place, minus 2. That's the first part. And we're multiplying that by negative 1 plus 4. Okay? Notice what I did there. I replaced the x's with negative 1's. And negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And negative 1 plus 4 is a positive 3. So when I multiply those two things, I get a negative 9. That is the place of my vertex. So my vertex is going to be back 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I need to count my 2s on the y-axis, right? I think I'll be okay to count my 1s here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, I can count my 1s on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. But I need to count by twos here. Two, four, six, eight. We'll call this negative 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. That way I can fit my nine in here. All right, so we know we're going to go back one, down nine, 
that would be right there. We'll make that. That's our vertex. All right. Now, the y-intercept, uh, that's going to be where it crosses the y-axis. I kind of have a feeling it's going to be like around here somewhere. But I can find it exactly if I rewrite my expression, x minus 2. I'll do it over here. x minus 2 times x plus 4. If I write it in standard form, then I'll already have it uh, because it's the constant when it's in standard form. So I can foil this sucker out and find out where... Uh, the y-intercept is going to be. So the first would be x times x, which is x squared. The outside would be x and 4, which is 4x. The inside, negative 2 and x. That's going to be negative 2x. And our last is negative 2 and positive 4, which gives me negative 8. And so out of all of these terms, when I write it in standard form, I'd have x squared uh, plus 2x because these two would combine my like terms to make 2x, and then minus 8. So my constant here is negative 8. That's where it's going to cross, kind of where I thought it was going to be. There is my y-intercept. My y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 8, which I'm notating down here. And here's function f. This is what it looks like. I'm just going to sketch it. Bottoms out right there. Vertex. It comes back up. And there we go. That is my f of x. And there's your help for lesson number 11. You guys, have a great day. And we'll see you hopefully back in class tomorrow.